What is pussy popping, you beautiful humans? My name is Ariane Andrew. I'm Matt Dillon, and welcome to another piping hot episode of Sippin' the Tea Quarantine Edition, ladies and gentlemen. Where we are, what, girl? Sip the tea in our guests. Spill that tea. <laughs> Damn, I still can't sing, mother. <laughs> <laughs> Who you got popping over there? We got Miss Mama here. I'm gonna, uh, she's about to fall asleep. What you got going on there? Little Glitty, and she's like, Mommy, if you don't put me down, I've been sleeping and you just woke me up. So, I'm listen, gonna... listen. All right, we're, we're coming full circle this episode. We're catching up with a, an old friend, NFL alum, entrepreneur, man about town. What's up, Mr. Nolan Carroll? What's going on, guys? How are you doing, man? We're getting there, man. We're getting there. Yeah, Living yeah, that thanks for having life. Oh, yeah, I know. Um, thanks for having me on, man. It's been a while. Shoot, what was it, I last know. year or something? Almost maybe two years. Oh, what? Yeah, I you're probably right. It has been two years, year maybe. Three in October. Damn. I think it has been. That time is flying, man. Right? Yeah, locked in the yeah. house. Flying, flying, flying. <laughs> <laughs> that that quarantine true. life. And speaking of quarantine life, like, how are you, how are you handling everything? How's been your mindset? with like being on the lockdown and like, what are your thoughts about everything? Yeah, well, I always joke with people. I, I've always been saying, I've been practicing this quarantine stuff for the last 33 years, because I've always been in the house. You know, that's all I do is, is I'm a homebody and I like to stay home. I like to have my own peace and, and plan. And I think this has been the best time. This has been the ultimate best time because everybody's at home right now. There's nobody taking trips to go anywhere. There's nobody on vacation. Nobody's going to work. Well, some people are going to work as essential businesses, but everybody's at home. And that's where you get to really sit down and think about yourself and what you really want to accomplish. If you want to get better at a new activity or pick up a new hobby or learn something new, you have an opportunity to do that. And that's really what I've been doing. I, I think if you come to my house, I've done so many do-it-yourself projects, me and Home Depot, I should have a membership there. That's how <laughs> much I've been going there because I've just done so much around my house because now I actually have the time to really do that. So it's been about really engaging my mind, engaging myself to, to do other activities and, and finish tasks that I didn't get a chance to because we're all busy in this world. We always got something going on. Somebody's pulling us left and right to go, go out to eat, go on vacation, go to this meeting, whatever it might be. We lose track of ourselves and what we want to do and, and we finally get a chance to, to really do that here and, and I hope people have really taken the, the time to uh to do that namaste man namaste that's <laughs> sage advice I like it definitely yeah no problem no problem that's crazy well for everybody that's not up to speed on on where you're at what you where you've come from just, I guess, take us through and let's like spin it a little bit because the more the more we've gotten all to know each other, I like the I like the analogies of of the the initial you know prior to the NFL with your mother and your coach and like how it you know everything kind of was a story and like you position yourself. So take us people through that don't know you from the NFL. They might know you now from you know the business world. Take us through the journey of getting into the NFL and like, you know, the kind of wheeling and dealings you had to do with the with Miss Mama to get the shit oh, Boy, yeah. Uh, yeah, I had to me and my mom went at it quite a bit when I was trying to play, but my story starts I think about by junior high school. When I was in the eighth grade, I'd ask my mom, well, I've been asking her for years, but she wouldn't let me play football. No tackle football whatsoever. She only put me in soccer and I was playing soccer since I was five. And I always asked her, hey, I want to go and try for the football team. She'd always say, no, you can't do it. And I always think it had something to do with my brother and sister because she would always use that excuse. You have to take care of your brother and your sister when they come home from school. You're the oldest. You're the man in the house when we're not home. So I took that responsibility. I took that in my mind, said that's what I need to do for my brother and sister. And I didn't know it wasn't because my mom didn't want me to get hurt. And so for the longest, I'm still fighting or I'm still fighting or I even snuck out one time and went to football trials for my high school. And I was only out there for a day and I made the team. But then my mom pulled me right off the team because <laughs> you can't do it. And uh, I had this coach that was my PE teacher. And I think it was towards the end of the school year, we were playing flag football. And I had no cleats, none of that stuff. It was just us in our regular clothes like we have today. And this is my first time playing flag football out there in, in high school. This is my freshman year. And it was two-hand touch. But what he saw was nobody was touching me. I, like, nobody could tackle me. Nobody could touch me. Mind you, 
I had a jacket tied around my waist, like just going through people. Nobody could even pull my jacket. So when he saw that, he came up to me and said, hey, do you want to try for the football team? I said, man, I can't do it. My mom says I have responsibilities I have at home, so I can't do it. He said, okay, I understand that. So I went and tried to talk to my mom, and it was he was very persuasive, I can tell you that. But the way he explained it to my mother was, would you rather pay for your son's education or would you rather him use football to get a free education? That's no money out of your pocket. And that's something you don't have to worry about because it's already guaranteed four or five years, maybe. And when he spun it that way in the educational standpoint, she said, okay, you're on to something. And they had a deal. They made a deal saying that if you give me two weeks to work with your son and he doesn't score a touchdown in our game coming up, you can pull him right then and there and he won't play football again. Now, I don't know any of this stuff that's going on. I'm just in my own little world. I'm a teenager. I'm trying to figure things out in life. And as this game was going on, and, and I remember when uh, I was scoring, I guess when I was scoring, my coach, his name is Ron Riddle, he was looking at my mom coming in, and I couldn't see my mom when I'm running. I'm just thinking about scoring. And right when I was, I was scoring a touchdown, he said, do you see what I'm, I'm talking about now? She said, yeah, I definitely see it. And needless to say, in that game, I scored two more touchdowns, so I had a total of three. So my mom really got to see it and see what the possibilities would be for me to go elsewhere and really go anywhere in the nation I wanted to. And I ended up becoming an All-American. I was All-City. I, I had a bunch of different you know, awards in high school. And no, none of that stuff meant anything to me. I was just worried about getting to college. If I can get to college, then my mom can get off my back. And <laughs> And so once I, I was able to do that, you know, the rest was kind of history for me. Um, it's just all about hard work when I was in school. And, you know, going from high school to college is a big transition. And that's something I had to learn, especially in another state, uh, the University of Maryland, because I came from Florida. So I went from uh, this country kid to this, this big city because D.C. was right down the street. It was only 10 minutes away. So I had to get adjusted to that lifestyle and just being in class, having my own responsibilities away from the home. Yeah, And, you know, just through that, you know, through that progression and me being who I am and working the way I was and have been, you know, I was able to uh, go into the NFL draft. I graduated from Maryland first, let my mom, prove my mom I, I could do Take that. that, that. Off. Take, like it was gone. <laughs> exactly. And then I got drafted uh, in the fifth round to the Miami Dolphins. And, you know, when I was there, it was so many lessons that I learned it's so crazy how life kind of one thing carries on to the next. The stuff I learned in high school, I was able to apply a little bit into college. And the stuff that I learned in college, I applied into the NFL. It was more about discipline, being punctual, you know, having respect, working as, as a team is what I learned throughout the journey. And then once I got into the NFL, it, it was a whole different beast. But that was something that I had every single year was a learning experience because yeah. I played young. Like my rookie year, I was thrown into the fire early. And a lot of people didn't even expect me to make the team, but here I am, this guy that got drafted in the later rounds is out there on the field starting, you know, and that, that kind of caught some people by surprise. And, you know, I had a lot of hate. I had a lot of love as well, but people just didn't know me as a person. They didn't know who I was because I yeah. always kept to myself and always make sure that I would do it on the field. I always wanted that to speak more volumes in my voice itself. So my NFL journey was, it was really good. It was very, it was a lot of different experiences. There was a lot of different people that, I had seen on TV and, and I, now I'm playing against, you know, I, I could go on for days about the stuff that I've seen on the field and stuff I, I have experienced, but I've played against hall of famers, pro bowlers, guys that you only can, you, you see articles about and you wonder how they do it. I mean, guys from, I played with Jason Taylor, Ricky Williams. I played against Tom Brady, Drew Brees, Philip Rivers. Uh, I picked off Eli Manning a couple of times. I mean, hey. I could, you know, I, Cam Newton, I could go down the list. You know, I've, yeah. I've been around guys. I've, I've played with a lot of good guys. And I think those experiences, those things that I've had to go through, I've been able to apply somewhat off the field going from football into this new transition. I don't even call it transition anymore. It's more of a, I'm here already. I'm doing it now. There's no need to say transition. Oh, I, let me stand <laughs> up and sit down. Yeah. That's the attitude, yeah. man. Yeah. yeah, it's 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 no longer a transition anymore at this point for me. I I know what I'm doing. I know what my vision is. I know what my what my passion is. I know what I want to do. I know how I want to help. I know who I want to help. And and I'm I'm not here to sell anything. I'm not here to to do that. That's not my job. And 
the more I've kind of gone through my experiences, the more I've been able to see that if I can have a relatable story to you or what's going on in your life, that means more than me giving you a product that can help you out or giving you a program that can help you out. I think people need that more nowadays. And I've been able to see that just from meeting one person, that person leads to another. So this has definitely been, it's been a fun experience. Yeah, that's, that's a bomb ass story right there. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so to have, like, it seems like you obviously have like a super strong mindset because if you look at a lot of people who are like former athletes transitioning to like an entrepreneur, transitioning to something different is super difficult because when you're on the field and you've had major success, that's what their identity, just like, that's my identity. That's all I know. So what do you think, do you think it had a lot to do with like how strict your mom was? What do you think were kind of gave you that mindset to be able to be successful, not only on the field, but off the field? Because a lot of people do struggle with that. Yeah, I, I think it really had to do with my parents. I, I think they would always tell me, don't let something else identify you, let you be the identification. And my mom, she's She's more famous than me. My mom is, she's- She's a baller, man. She, she, she wait, she yeah. good. She, yeah, she's the all-star of the family. Everybody thinks it's me, it's definitely her. She's, and she does it like it's nothing. She just, is, it's effortless to her, but she's put in so much work behind the scenes and she's never wanted to get attached to one thing. She's Lieutenant Governor of the state of Florida, or she was, but people still address her like that. My mom's just like, well, I did that. That's fine, but that's not who I am. I'm Jennifer Carroll. And that's the same way she has told us, me and my brother and sister, is to not let, well, first, mainly for me, don't let football define who I am. Mm. You define football. And that's what I've always, you know, I've always taken into account, especially with the stuff I'm doing. And when I was getting into business, I made it seem as, well, in my mind, I was thinking, well, I have to get the businesses first before I can start talking about myself. And once I started realizing people want to hear more about the person behind the product and what they're selling than the actual product itself. So that's when I started opening up more about my life and my experiences. But then I started seeing that people need help with this stuff. So then that's why I started segueing into that. And I didn't necessarily try and run away from football because I still talk about football, but I don't want people to think, oh, it's just a football player. And they just pigeonhole you in that. I want you to see me as somebody that is capable of doing a lot of different things. And to know that he's he, the possibilities in his mind is endless because he knows that he can do whatever he sets his mind to. And that's what it comes down to in this world. If you focus on what you want to do, you shouldn't have anything kind of sway you or stray you from doing something else because if it gets hard or it gets difficult or you don't have the right breaks, you shouldn't just break down and think, oh, I got to go to something new because the first thing that I tried didn't work. You're going to have to keep trying until you find out what's right. And I always, say that God's always going to try and test you. And I don't try and get religious on here like that, but God's always going to try and test you to see if that's something that you really want. And if you really want it, he's going to see by your devotion to whatever it is you're doing that he's actually going to give it to you. That's why a lot of people, they, they stray or they get frustrated because it's not happening on their time. Most of the time, your hard work, the stuff that you got to go through, it's never going to be instant. It's never going to be immediate. And you have to know that, and especially for athletes, when they, they have that identity of them being a sports figure and transitioning. They're still holding on to that. You know, it helps them to a certain extent, but they can't live in the past. They can't be that same person that they were because that identity side of them as them being the player is no longer. They can't be the player anymore. So they need to find another way to at least be attributed to that player if they want to. If they don't want to and they go into something else, use that leverage to your advantage. Use that platform to your advantage. So you can do something else. And I, I think you're seeing it more prevalent now. Guys are starting to see that, that they know that they are the brand. And it's not necessarily the stuff they place around them, but it's what the, the value that they can bring to those other things that come to them is what they're starting to realize to grow their own brand. So once they're, they're out of the league or they're out of whatever they're doing, they can just hop into the next thing, whatever it might be. If they want to be a, a principal at a high school, they can do that. If they want to be a football coach, they can do that. If they want to be a motivational speaker. They can do all those things. They just have to know what it is that they want to do and know that they got to put in the work. It's, I think it's no different than when you get into college and you want to go to the NFL. You have three, four, maybe five years to get that done. In those four years, you don't know if you're going to be an All-American. You don't know if you're going to have a season-ending injury in one of those years. You don't know if you're even going to get drafted once you get out of college, but you're constantly putting in that blind faith of work 
to know that your end result is getting into the league. So you're going to do whatever you can possible throughout those years to make yourself the best so somebody can see you, somebody can notice you, notice all the hard work and see your potential to continue to grow. Yeah, being relentless. I, I like that. You know what? It has been a minute since we've chatted, but I will say <laughs> that I've... No, I will say this. It has, it has, man. It has been... A, a remarkable, I can see a remarkable like shift in your tunnel vision into products, into you know how you're applying yourself into things that you're passionate about now. Whether that is still products or or apps or technology or whatever it is in the business world that you're leading with your story now, leading with your story and having been there as a father, how what is that one you no? Know, your journey, your life, what, you know, what would be like a one thing that you would want to, your son to take from everything that you've done? You know, whether it's wisdom, advice, you know, what, what is that one kind of nugget that you would love to see him and be like, oh, he's going to be on a good path? I would say don't be so hard on yourself. You're going to make mistakes. And for me, I used it, it was negative and positive for me at the same time because I was always hard on myself because I knew I wanted more for myself. It wasn't mm -hmm. about kicking myself when I was down. It was just more of motivating myself to do better. So if I didn't get something right, I made sure I did it right the next time. I was always looking for perfection. I was always chasing that. But I came to realize kind of towards the end of my career, you're not always going to be perfect in something. You're going to make mistakes. The thing you have to do is learn from those mistakes. But don't be scared to make them. And don't be hesitant because somebody else is telling you you can't do it. And I see a lot of those qualities in my son. He's fearless. Like, my son will do anything he wants. And there's times, too, where if he, he gets frustrated, he'll start to question if he should continue to do it. And that's where I like to step in and let him know, hey, just go ahead and do it. You're, you have to continue to do it if you want to accomplish something because you can't just quit. And dad's not going to come in and try and help you. If you can do it yourself, go ahead and do it. And I'm not saying I'm, I'm tough on my son, but I'm loving at the same time. But that's the lesson that I want him to know is it's okay to fail. It's okay to mess up. As long as you learn from that mistake and do better next time, you'll be fine. That's some good advice right there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I yeah, like hopefully. That a lot. yeah. Yeah, I like it. Hopefully he listens. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, before we hop into like the rapid fire, I know we briefly like kind of you know, talked about how you transitioned to business from, you know, being a pro athlete. So kind of shed some light for, you know, you know, people who are now following your journey or people who don't know about your business journey. Like, let's talk about that a little bit. Like, what's been one of your biggest highlights? And if there was something you could redo, is there anything that you would want to redo? Even though we know you've said it, failure is just a time to just kind of relearn and start from start from scratch it's not really a yeah. it's just you know living and growing yeah i i think for me it the best thing about all of this has been the connections that i've i've made throughout whoever i've met like with matt it was through somebody else you know yeah and so on and so forth it's just that journey that you're on you never know who you're going to meet and i think for me that's the most exciting part of this because i'm constantly meeting somebody new i'm running into somebody else where i'm gaining more knowledge of something I never knew about. And for me, it's, it's like this whole new world exists. It's like the matrix when Morpheus gives the red pill and the blue pill. And I think it's, and maybe it's a red pill. I can't remember, but it's a red pill. And now it's this whole world out here outside of football that I'm for the first time really experiencing. So for me, that's been the most fun part as far as, you know, certain mistakes. I don't call them mistakes, but starting on this path, there's definitely, a certain way I could have done it, but I felt like the way I had to do it at that time to really learn and experience what I needed to do, I did it that way. Uh -huh. But looking back on it, I see that I can use my experiences to help somebody else. I've had so many guys come up to me and ask me, how are you doing this? How'd you get into that? And for me, it's just simple. I just let them know, hey, look, this is what I messed up on. This is what I learned from it. And these are the people that I met. And I'm not, I'm not the one to hold my information to myself you know, some stuff I do, but if guys need help or they need a certain connection, I haven't minded doing that. And I also think throughout this too, I've realized that you need a team for everything that you're doing. I don't know everything in this world, but I know a lot of people that do. So for me, it's, it's nothing to get a team together where everybody can work together, be on the same page for one common goal 
and motivate them all. And I think that's the biggest thing. People will only take care of what they feel is important to them. If you make them feel important, if you make them feel part of something, they will take care of it. They will treat it like it's theirs. And, and that's what I've been seeing more and more is, is utilizing the team aspect of what I learned in football onto this basically endeavor of life that I'm doing. And through my businesses, I've been able to really do that. And the people that I've gotten around me and surrounded myself with, they all have one common goal and that's to succeed. And that's what you really need yeah. as a team to, to really be good. That's what's up right there. Well, what I was yeah. trying to get to too is because you haven't actually named your business. And I didn't know if you wanted to, you know. Oh, yeah, I can do that. I just, just didn't so know. If you, know. Yeah. Just run it down the list. I, I mean, I can. Are so people can follow you and, you know. Okay, yeah. You know, I can do that, definitely. Business. I just didn't, I didn't know we had enough time for that. So uh, I, I didn't want to run down You're a very much, VIP but. special guest, brother. Oh, we okay. Got All right, cool. All right, cool. I mean, yeah, so. Give us a short snippet of kind of like. Short, yeah, I, I can definitely do that. Yeah, so I, I broke it down into four different entities of what I wanted to do. And for me, the first one has been my foundation. I think my foundation is very important and it's something that I'm getting more in the forefront of because I feel like my voice needs to be heard more around wherever it needs to be heard. And I think that for the longest time, I've always wanted to be in the back end of it and just more donate and give things away. That's what, how I've always been with my foundation. I never wanted it to be about me. I wanted it to be about what the foundation could do for somebody else. But now I'm seeing that I can use the foundation to really get my message across. So that is a, uh, that's one pillar of it. The next one I have is, is Yellow Rum. I'm a partner with a liquor company and the stuff we're doing, I think is, is different as far as, you know, liquor companies go and the liquor brand. We've, uh, we actually are working with Google right now to, we've actually finished our commercial with Google. So they're gonna drop that before all this hoopla and stuff and this craziness happened. It was supposed to be dropped this month, but you know, they have told us to wait until the summertime or when this all kind of clears up. But, We've got some others, a few more surprises in there with that too. I can't, I can't give all the details with that one. I signed NDA, so I can't go into that. Okay. Um, then, but I will eventually, you'll know when you see it. Uh, go ahead, the next don't one, worry. Yeah, uh, the next one I have is um, my app and it's called CoinGoat. And it was probably about two years ago where it was me and another business partner, we were together and we were working on an app and what i saw was something to me just i don't know i felt like something had to be changed in this app because this one i was just now getting into the business of seeing how things worked and what you need and the people you need around you to really make things work and go but at the same time you really have to understand what you're getting yourself into so i i guess i basically created my own app on accident i didn't even try and do it i just it happened that way but i wanted it to to be tied into something just not just to make money but to also help other people and i think what's going on now in this time is you're seeing a lot of small businesses kind of hurting right now yeah and they need they need help but they need help more marketing than they do actually setting up shop again and what i've been finding out is a lot of small businesses don't know how to market themselves and the platform that we use with coingo is really to help them do that is to help them reach a certain demographic not to sell anything but to know who to target so we're we're that platform to help them target customers that they may need to drive to their business and i don't want to think it of i don't want anybody to think of it as an advertising company or an seo company because that's not what we are we're more hands-on because we're giving these people these businesses these small businesses per se information of who they need to target in their demographic so that's been something where like I've had to really study this to actually know what to do. And I've, I've been lucky enough to have my brother also involved in this. And then I also have uh, my clothing brand that I have too. I'm going to give you guys that later, but that's something that I've been just like, it's been yeah, cool. I've been working clothes, on it. Bro. We need I'll, get, I'll, no, I'll give it to you. No, see if you, if you see this symbol, I don't know if you've seen it, but this is the logo to my foundation. And yeah. this is, uh, this is the N and this is the C Nolan Carroll. And I basically made it into a chain, but I need to get, merchandise now so I, i've gotten into that and then oh yeah i got one more thing i'm sorry i'm sure <laughs> I, it, it slipped my mind i'm trying to put it all into a nutshell so you so you have enough time um i have a podcast i have personal videos blogs and uh a tv show that i'm kind of doing here in my own house i've set up like i said do-it-yourself projects they've been all in here and i've made sure that i wanted to capture everything that i'm doing i want to make sure that people see 
different views of, of different people's lives. So I, I've decided to interview a couple of my buddies, some of my family members, people that have, in my walks of life, have been instrumental, not just for me, but for other people that you would never even think about in this world when you're watching TV, when you're watching sports. And I want to be able to highlight that because I think a lot of people have their own experiences to get them to where they are today. And just because people think of success as you got to be this high profile entertainer, this high profile uh, sports player, that's not necessarily the definition of success. Success is to me is being greater than your former self. If you can be greater the, the next day than you were the day before, it's always going to add up to something. It's always going to make you more successful. And that's what I want to highlight with these people that I'm bringing out. So those are my, I thought there were four pillars. It's five pillars, but you know, well, he's, a busy, he's a busy, busy, busy man. Definitely, definitely busy guy right here. I like it. I like it. Let, yeah. You want to hit the rapid? I was going to say, Matt, would you like to start the rapid fire? All right. Let us, let us rock and roll. Would All you right. want to live forever? I would not want to live forever because uh, I want to see myself grow old. I want to see my son grow up. I want to, I don't want to see him die before me. So I there definitely uh, don't want to live forever. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you weren't in the field of ever being a pro athlete or being an entrepreneur, what would you say you would be doing right now? Right now, if I was no sports at all, nothing involved in no. sports. Yeah. Oh man, I honestly, I'd probably be a politician. I would have followed in my mom's footsteps. If I didn't like football or anything like that, I just know that's the path it would have been on. Nice. I can see that. I can see that. I All don't right. want to see it, but I, it, it would I happen. can see that. All right, let's round it, round it out. One sentence you would tell your younger self. One sentence I would tell my younger self. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of anything. Don't, that's don't even. Mother. That's it. There's no that's fearless. That's a wrap on that There's shit. No yeah. That really is. I love that. Yeah. yeah. I want to say thank you so much for coming back and joining, and congratulations yeah. no on your uh, – on your GQ, brother, because oh, that, bro. it's a lot of big things. I'm oh, really man. proud of. I mean, this has been a journey. I'm really proud of you, brother. I'm oh yeah, really I didn't proud. even I didn't even realize it's been two years, man. Honestly, I had no. Neither idea. Did I. It's yeah. been a crazy ride from from yeah, just meeting when you we as all well. Ate sushi was, on was it Sunset Boulevard? Uh, uh, yeah, Katana. it was Katana. Katana. Katana yeah. Yeah. yeah, I remember. Wow. Wait, it was your birthday. It was your birthday. Not not my your... birthday. It was, was Matt's birthday. Was it no? I don't know. It was, what it was, it was somebody's was. birthday. It was a celebration of life. It was a celebration of life. It <laughs> might have been that. It might have been something like that. But it was, I can't believe it's been two years, man. It's That's time crazy, crazy, man. Quite. It's been fun. Almost two years. Almost two. Yeah, let's not push it. Let's not push, <laughs> let's not push it. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So tell everybody, like, where they can follow you at and keep up with everything that you're doing. You have such great things happening. So go ahead and plug. Plug yourself. Yeah. Well, people can, if they want to look for my foundation, it's the Nolan Carroll Foundation.com. If you want to see me on Instagram, I think Instagram, Snapchat. I just got back on Facebook again. Uh, it's been like 10 years since I've been back on Facebook. It's Nolan Carroll. Um, everything else is Carroll City, Instagram, Snapchat. I try to keep it simple, but that's where people can find me. Bam, girl. Right, Poppin, where can everybody find you, Mr. Matt Dillon? They can find me anywhere and everywhere. I'm on all street corners. Uh, Matt Dillon, <laughs> 1983. I'm on the hustle. I'm on the grind. What's up? Puppy pride, Miss Mama. And you can find little mama where? Oh, girl, she don't. That's too hard. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Follow me across the board at Ariane Andrew. And then this little nugget, Liddy Glint. <laughs> All righty, guys. Thank you again, Nolan, for coming on with us for a special quarantine episode. And until next no, time, what? Right. We will see you next week. Appreciate you guys. Bye. 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 <laughs>